want you to come to dinner tomorrow night. Tomorrow? Tomorrow's Thanksgiving. Yes, it is Thanksgiving. Welcome to the Gilmore Girls vlog. I am at Home Depot right now and I was trying to find some moms and of course, look at what I have behind me. It is covered and littered across the store. If you look here, you have all of the lawn ornaments and the lawn decor and whatnot. So I probably will be completely out of luck, especially since I'm in Florida as well. No moms, no luck. We found some moms, so let's go ahead and see which colors will work for the fall. Of course, orange, maybe red. I don't know.
Okay guys, so we just made it to Barnes, Barnes & Noble, and um, the book that I'm looking for for Jess's reading list is, I always want to say For Whom the Bell Tolls, or The Have-Nots, Have the one from Ernest Hemingway, and also The Sun Also Rises. It's the other one. What is it called? A Farewell to Arms, okay? That's supposed to be a very sad war story, and you know, I'm expecting it to a little bit off because somebody just walked in the background but yeah um so i'm just gonna look for a farewell to arms to see if i can find it so we can get on out of here we just need one book and one book only shelf control For all the romance girlies out there, um, I really like Better Than the Movies by Lynn Painter. It's actually one that I thoroughly enjoyed. It makes me so giddy and smiley whenever I think about it because it was just so, I think it just was well done and I'm not really a romance reader. So it looks like this is the only copy of the book, but I don't particularly really like this cover. Oh my gosh. And the woman's naked. <laughs> I don't know. I think we're gonna go for Amazon for this. Mm, still mulling it over. This is the only edition they have. Because some things last forever. I just wrapped up my Fantastic Mr. Fox video, so go check that out if you haven't seen it. As you can see, I'm wearing my little foxy sweater. <laughs> yeah, I just wanted to quickly pop in here kind of to introduce the video and to just let you guys know why I would want to read such a book as A Farewell to Arms by Ernest Hemingway. I gotta actually go find it. I love the whole Americana type of writing that this author portrays. I don't know what it is about it. It's very literature heavy. It's easy to digest. It's, it's fun to follow and it feels quite like hyper realistic and a little bit sentimental and cozy at the same time, but I am so excited to continue Farewell to Arms. I'm gonna level with you guys. I'm gonna be honest, as I always am. I did start this video in 2023. So the footage that you guys saw of me shopping around Home Depot and going to Barnes to get the book and all that jazz. And even later on in this video, you guys will see a clip of me making this delicious, delicious pecan topped brownie. Oh my gosh, guys, make it. That's all I can say. If you have a sweet tooth, make it. Oh, and it's perfect for Thanksgiving as well, which is one of the reasons why I was doing it back then. But yeah, like last year I started that video and I felt like by the time I was ready to continue or to wrap it up, it was almost like Christmas time. So I didn't feel like picking it up, but I do have the footage from there and it will be used. It will be, and I might look a little different. <laughs> this is me, uh, November 25th, 2024. And that was me then 
I don't know, November 2023. <laughs> running around doing errands, running errands and whatnot. I still have Fantastic Mr. Fox playing in the background, but there's something in particular about Hemingway's writing. Like, what is it about Hemingway's writing? Maybe I can look into that. Mm -hmm. Okay, a couple of things that are popping up that I totally can relate to. It says here that, um, yeah, I talked about this as well in my November TBR a little bit. I kind of touched on this, but I really appreciate how like real, I just said that, and authentic his writing is. It's just so easy to just get extremely comfortable in his book. And that's the only book I've ever read, but I was like, wow, this guy, like he's speaking to me. Like, I don't want to like shut him away. I love it. Um, it says here that Hemingway's experiences as a journalist, war correspondent, which is very incredible and possibly one of the reasons why he may have had his mental health struggles in life. As a war correspondent, you see things that you, not a lot of people do see. And adventurer lent his writing authenticity. He drew from real life experiences, capturing the raw and unvarnished truth of human existence. I totally wholeheartedly agree with that. It also says here, um, themes of human struggle. Hemingway explored universal themes like love, loss, war, and resilience. His uh, protagonists often face physical or emotional battles, reflecting the idea of grace under pressure. Excellent, excellent way of saying that. Another thing here that I think is just so special and so unique, it kind of reminds me of this uh, author, Michael Ondaatje, who did The English Patient. I haven't read that book either. Maybe 2025 could be the year for me to read that book because I'm like high off of like, I don't know, filming again because I just finished like Fantastic Mr. Fox and I was doing this really cool diamond art painting kit. Oh my god, it's so much fun. I was super thrown and spent and a little frazzled about it, <laughs> as I was saying, and I just got right into it. And I'm like, oh, there's a buzz. There's a buzz of just wanting to continue that thing, but I have other videos to film, so we'll do that in the background on my own time. But it says here, another thing for Hemingway as to why I probably really enjoy him and why I was linking him to a little bit of a Michael and Dachi, the English patient feel, is vivid descriptions of place. Whether in Spain, Cuba, or Africa, Hemingway's settings feel alive. His evocative, I was gonna say evocative, <laughs> descriptions immerse readers in the environments his characters inhabit. And there are more things as to why he would be very iconic and cool and whatnot, but we only got like 30, 40 minutes to do this video. But yeah, I'm so excited to continue. I did start the story and I can tell you, I don't know if it was the Italian campaign or where exactly in Europe, if it was Austria or Italy or France or England, I don't recall. I have to kind of start it over because that was a year ago. I loved it being in that setting of uh, the, the the war zone and the mundane conversations that his characters are having with one another. I enjoyed, if I remember, I enjoyed how the two leads got together and their conversations that they had and the love interest that was brewing there. I don't know. I think this book might tear me apart by the end of it. It is called A Farewell to Arms. So we shall see. We shall see. I'm going to go pick it up really quickly. Got to find it. I have so many books everywhere. I have some in my room. I have some in a hallway. I have some by the television. I have some back here where I have a bunch of Hemnes bookcases. They're everywhere. So let me go see if I can find it. I do have the book here. I found it in the hallway. I was looking all over the place for it. I probably got to around to chapter 19, which is just unfortunate because that's like 100 pages in and I have to reread 100 pages. It's not that bad, but like still, you know, I, um, have things to do. So, but it's good to get that little refresher. I'm gonna sit down and take a moment and just kind of enjoy a cup of coffee in Luke's mug. We're just gonna go ahead and get all comfy and cozy and read and change into something a little bit more comfortable. I love these sweaters to pieces, I do, but they're not exactly comfortable when it's about 78 degrees. Yes, it has cooled down in Florida as it has in the majority of the country, but where I live, it gets kind of warm and I'm indoors right now. So this is a, a good sweater for like 40 degree weather, which I'm not enjoying right now. Let's go ahead and make ourselves a nice hot cup of coffee and get started with reading this again. <laughs> Why are you staring at the door? That come in the way. If you're leaving, that's fine. But don't forget your pride. Cause I'm just trying. Uh, 
such an iconic piece okay this is just the first paragraph it's so beautiful and descriptive in the late summer of that year we lived in a house in a village that looked across the river and the plain to the mountains in the bed of the river there were pebbles and boulders dry and white in the sun and the water was clear and swiftly moving and blue in the channels troops went by the house and down the road and the dust they raised powdered the leaves of the trees. The dust they raised powdered the leaves of the trees. Like, it's like, like, where's the harp? <laughs> like, we need a harp sound. It's so beautiful. The trunks of the trees too were dusty and the leaves fell early that year. And we saw the troops marching along the road and the dust rising and leaves stirred by the breeze falling and the soldiers marching and afterward the road bare and white except for the leaves. Ugh, it's so good. Yeah, it is just so delightful. Oh my goodness. It just like, it's so descriptive. You can literally visualize the leaves dancing as they do whenever there's like a gust of wind that goes by. I just think that is so perfect. Oh my gosh. I'm wondering what Rory, <laughs> I'm wondering what Rory would think. Try to say wondering and Rory at the same time. I'm wondering what Rory, <laughs> I'm wondering what she would think about this book around this time of the year. It's quite perfect for fall and even, you know, this Thanksgiving because we're inching closer to the winter time and obviously the leaves are almost non-existent especially if you're getting snow around this time of the year where a lot of places are actually getting their first snow so yeah it's just really beautiful and i can't wait to dive into this even more and just and get right into the thick of the story ah, i'm just so excited i'm having a grand old time reading this particular book okay guys so we are going to start with our pecan pie brownie i just need a box mix of uh, a brownie basically it'll be a Ghirardelli one that's very good and then I'm gonna make the topping for the pecans it's super simple like corn syrup pecans of course chopped pecans we need sugar eggs and maybe butter and mix that up and you put it right on top and it's supposed to be a very simple thing that's perfect for the season it has an autumnal feel a wintry feel and a very seasonal you know vibe to it oh I hate saying vibe but you get what I'm saying let's go ahead and get started with that right now I've been needing to do this for a while <laughs> I don't know which one I would have used. There's ultimate chocolate and then there's double chocolate. I don't know. What do you guys think? Let's do ultimate since it's a video. Let's do ultimate. You're it. You're the ultimate. It's automatic. I'm sure of it. Okay. Nobody asked for, you know, a singing competition thing. No, I'm
lady Not in the way she walks The way she talks Or the way she loves me Just look at me I'm like a monkey in a coconut tree You know I'm overjoyed This boy, oh boy, she's my cat and strong and love was just a word in silly songs but from that cursed day when you crossed my way all my confidence was gone I'm bewitched bewildered and utterly alone <laughs> So, how did the four dinners work out? You guys must feel more stuffed than you've ever been. See, we didn't eat at my parents because of the upset, so we really had three dinners, not four. Which means... What? We didn't have to skip rolls. <gasps> oh, yeah! Hey, do you have any rolls left? No, come on. Just a little something for the walk home? I don't see how you do it. Well, you're not us, are you? Night, Luke. This has been a nice Thanksgiving. Very. Nicer for some than others, though. Yeah. Night, Kirk. Night.